Hi, this is Pat Moorhead, and we are back for another 6-5 Insider. I am here with my incredible co-host, Daniel Newman, and we are here to talk chips. We love chips, and we love what High Bandwidth Memory, otherwise known as HBM, can do for everybody. Daniel, how you doing, buddy? Hey, Pat. I just love when you call me incredible. I have to be honest. We could cut the show there, and we could call it a day, but... I think our audience, our subscribers, our fans, everybody that's out there that wants to learn a little something here would appreciate it if the show went on. I wanted to say the show must go on, Pat. Yes, it will go on. But hey, without further ado, let's introduce our guest from Micron Technology. Girish, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Patrick and Dan. Very excited to be here and honored to be here, being a big fan of your show. Oh man, can we just can you just keep talking about that? You know the show. No, I'm just kidding. Sometimes we like to talk about ourselves, but it's even better when other people are talking about us. <laughs> all, all jokes aside, you know how the pod works. We have fun, and we really are big believers that entertaining and educating is, is the way to go. And let's roll in. Let's talk some high bandwidth memory, HBM three. Yeah, let's let's do that, Pat. And by the way, I think you can do both. You can entertain and inspire yes. and educate and do all at the same time. That's Agreed. what it's all about. So, Girish, um, HBM, you know, Pat's throwing it out there like everybody knows. I don't think necessarily everybody out there does know. So just give us the kind of the quick uh, what is high bandwidth memory and talk a little bit about its yeah. the, the applications. Sure. Yeah, so if you start, you know, peddling back, the world is today excited about chat GPT. Uh, pretty much everybody around there knows what, when you say chat GPT, everybody's eyes pop up. Uh, but if you look at AI applications and generally the large language models have led to you know, state of the art accuracies to do various tasks today. However, these, training these models has not been very easy in the past. It's been very challenging because the GPU memory capacity and its bandwidth is very limited. So if you kind of want to take uh, an example, the model sizes yeah. have been growing at about 1,000x every three years. But if you look at the memory capacity growth to cater to that model growth is not scaling at that same rate. So which makes it extremely hard for us to basically train a model in a very efficient manner or in a reasonable time frame. Uh, so something like a chat GPT-3, which was about 175 billion parameters, if you were to translate that into, you know, typical capacity to store that model, that's about 800 gigabytes of potential memory that you need. So all of this points to an incremental need in memory capacity. Now, you can have all the memory capacity in the world right next to wherever you want it, but if you don't have enough bandwidth to basically meet that growing need for the data coming out of the memory, then you're still going to be choked for performance, right? So if you look at basically uh, a memory consumption in terms of uh, a training model, for example, it typically has an optimizer state, it has gradients and it has parameters. And then apart from this, it has got the activations and the, you know, the buffer capacity that all of that ends up consuming a lot of the available memory for a training, basically, which means that you cannot get enough of memory capacity, and with that, the memory bandwidth. And high bandwidth memory, if you think about it, is the industry standard uh, memory that basically, as the name suggests, provides the highest bandwidth uh, for a given capacity. And the way it does it is think of it as you've got, you know, eight to 16 highway lanes where which are independent, and you can move uh, data back and forth on these highways which uh, in the memory land and in the semiconductor industry you call memory channels. So it has 16 independent channels that run at a pretty high frequency. And that's one of the ways you get that bandwidth need. Uh, but again, you could do, if you were to try to build a, call it an exascale supercomputer or a, or a traditional uh, large data center that requires the kind of memory bandwidth that we are talking about for these generative AI models, you're going to end up, if you start looking at the different memory solutions out there, uh, you could get the bandwidth by just shoving a lot of memory components. But the issue is as you start putting them together, you will start to see that the power required to basically get the data in and out of that memory 
is going to be so expensive that you know it's not an easy one for you to manage so you need to do all of this very energy efficiently and the way the uh, industry has basically come about defining a solution which we call the hbm it's an in-package memory which means the amount of distance that data has to travel between the host and the memory is very short which means it's very energy efficient and because it's got these 16 wide highway lanes that you can run at speed you get the bandwidth and the way we get the capacity is we actually take one layer of memory and start stacking on top of it. So it's like a mini skyscraper that you're building and you have eight high solutions, meaning eight stacks of DRAM. And the way the DRAM talks to the host uh, or between themselves is through what we call the through silicon via or TSVs. Uh, an analogy that I typically give my kids when I try to explain my job at Micron is I say, hey, you get those burgers and you've got that little toothpick that goes between them that holds them together. The TSVs is very similar. It tries to basically take the data that is on the bottom most die and tries to move it up the top of that memory layer through these little tiny TSVs or through silicon vias, uh, which basically means you've got a lot, lot of capacity in a very small footprint. So. Effectively, HPM, if you kind of want to summarize it, it's the industry standard memory that provides the highest bandwidth in the smallest footprint, and it's an in-package memory uh, in a very energy efficient manner. No, I think, I, by the way, I love the uh, hamburger analogy. You literally took one of the most sophisticated techniques, which is TSV to get power and data uh, between layers. I, I, I love that. I mean, I, I like to think of HPM that connects uh, chips together for the most the highest performance applications and and high performance definition is expanding to to the amount of data that mm -hmm. it takes to get from let's say one compute engine to another uh, or uh, getting it to other parts uh, of the subsystem so micron for a long time has had uh, uh, you know a product line delivering this I mean I I can envision the cards right now with your with your memory on it, but I'm curious with this just insatiable need uh, for compute and the latest, uh, which is uh, things like generative AI and Chat Chat GPT. Um, how are you responding uh, to your customer needs uh, in the marketplace? Yeah, no, I think that's a great uh, question, Patrick. So uh, you know we believe in really solving the problems that not only just benefit just the technology industry, but also basically solving human uh, uh, race related uh, topics down in the future. And if you uh, look at the supercomputers that are built today, which have these crazy amount of memory need and bandwidth, uh, HBM is one way to basically go address some of those needs. Uh, I'll give you an example. The One of the supercomputers that were built uh, was one of the uh, primary sources of running various simulations when COVID-19 pandemic was prevalent and uh, the pharmaceutical companies were trying to identify the right drugs or the compounds that actually go and help, you know, tackle the disease directly. Uh, so, you know, solutions like HBM really change the way we think about memory technology as just being a component in a system to being a critical component in that system. So if you scale that back to Micron's history, uh, Micron were one of the pioneers in developing the TSV technology. Uh, most of your audience, and I'm sure you folks remember, we had uh, come up with what we call the hybrid memory cube, which again takes the concept of stacking memory on top of each other and then communicating with the host. Uh, there. And uh, we took that and we leveraged the technologies that we had developed for that particular solution as we came into the HBM2E world, right? HBM2E was the first place where we introduced our products and we are currently in production uh, with that product for a while. And uh, just this week, uh, we had an exciting announcement. Uh, we announced the planet's very first greater than one terabyte per second memory bandwidth per placement solution. Uh, our HBM3, sometimes called HBM3 Generation 2 or Gen 2, uh, some folks in the industry call it HBM3E. 
Now, the beauty of what we've done with this particular announcement is it's not just a boost of the bandwidth that we spoke about a while back. It also provides an increased capacity. Uh, so we are using one of our latest process nodes that you folks might be uh, aware of that we had announced our one beta process node. And we are leveraging the technology leadership there to help pack 24 gigabits yeah. of memory in one layer. Uh, so basically by stacking eight of them, you get a 24 gigabyte solution, which is extremely power efficient. It's uh, expected to be one of the best in class in power efficiency. Uh, basically delivering the kind of performance we are talking about, which are going to help address some of the, you know, uh, growing challenges that what I call the beast, which is the compute element, uh, which is craving for this data. So this is going to be the, the next generation of HPM technology that basically feeds the beast. Uh, the, the going joke around in Micron is we are bigger, faster, and cooler. <laughs> uh, what I mean by that is we have more capacity, so we are the big guys. We've got uh, it's the fastest memory that we think is going to be available in the planet for the next few years, and uh, by you know the sheer amount of performance that you get. And the cool piece is where we are trying to get that 24 gigabytes of memory solution within eight layers of DRAM. So right. One of the challenges in the uh, memory industry, especially HBM, when you stack memory on top of anything, the heat that's generated at the bottom needs to be dissipated at the top because the cooling element typically is at the top. And this means the more number of layers you stack, the more heat you're kind of you know trapping at the bottom. So with an eight high 24 gigabyte solution, we think we're gonna be able to address some of the energy efficiencies and thermal efficiency um, problems that the industry is facing in getting to higher capacity HBMs. So it's it's we think that this is you know with our solution we are going to be able to improve the overall performance uh, in a data center. You know we measure that with the total cost of ownership or TCO. Uh, huge benefit that we are expecting. Now a lot of people ask me what what's TCO mean, and you could look at it from two different angles. Uh, the one angle that you could look at is if you said, hey, I have a fixed number of nodes that I want to go and invest in, um, then you have a specific number of uh, uh, GPUs or memory that you can buy. And the amount of time you take to train a model then reduces by using Micron's HPM. The other way to think about it is if you're building your initial data center and you say, I want to train a chat GPT in 30 days. Right. And you basically plan your... Uh, GPUs and memory based off of that, then you do not need as much memory bandwidth or uh, as much memory components in your system. And hence, as a result, sometimes even your GPU. So you would actually be saving in terms of the actual CapEx that you invest to get that data center up and running for those workloads. So, you know, it's going to be a huge TCO benefit. Uh, once this product is uh, being used in your AI generative AI applications or HPC applications. So, so Pat, he hit on, uh, he did the hamburger yeah. thing yes. and, um, you know, he's teaching his kids HBM use, you know, future engineers. Yes. And he then he, he did a, you know, like it was like a high school metaphor from Greece, you know, bigger, <laughs> faster, cooler. I don't know what that is, but something like that, you know, so. And you've somehow taken HBM now and you've, you've made it like the coolest kid in high school, the, the biggest, fastest and coolest. Um, but I, I like the analogy. And obviously there's some pretty good, um, probably some pretty valuable sustainability impacts too from being yeah. higher performer, lower power, which matters. So just a couple minutes left here. Love to kind of, you know, I hear a lot about the opportunity in AI, and I think that with LLMs, that's going to be a big topic and a big opportunity for Micron. But love to kind of just say, see from your perspective, you know, what else are you seeing right now in the memory ecosystem and what should, uh, you know, what should Patrick and I, what should all of our viewers be keeping an eye on? Yeah, I think the memory and storage landscape uh, in the market has changed, right? The industry 4.0, autonomous cars, uh, generative AI and uh, even the phones that we tend to use has transformed the way memory is being used. And you're looking for more heterogeneous uh, architectures and solutions that basically address what I say are three major problems that the industry wants the memory industry to solve. They want more capacity, 
Yeah. They want more bandwidth and they want it to be more reliable. So the three big ones, more capacity, more bandwidth, more reliable. And if you look at broadly what's happening in the industry today, uh, the DDR4 is transitioning to DDR5, which means they are craving for more you know, bandwidth. And that transition is also coupled with an increase in capacity. Um, you are beginning to see the introduction or usage of LP DDR memory, low power DRAM memory being used in data centers uh, for uh, traditional CPU related applications. Uh, you're also seeing uh, solutions that were used for gaming devices like GDDR6X that Micron has running at 24 gigabits per second pin speed. I mean, uh, it's crazy the kind of speeds that these folks try to push that industry towards. Uh, that memory solution is not only being used for gaming applications, it's also going into data center for inference applications, especially for text to video or uh, uh, voice to text uh, kind of conversions. Um, and then if you look at it from a CXL perspective, there's the CXL attached memory, which is trying to expand the capacity and bandwidth uh, simultaneously. So that's another area where uh, Micron's playing in this space. And then we already talked about HBM uh, as the critical piece of the generative AI related solutions, right? It's a very, very important component in that system uh, that, that basically helps you enhance your AI solutions. And if you just look at it from a HBM standpoint, the ecosystem has very ambitious targets. They want to double the bandwidth every two to four years and uh, usually want to couple that with a 50% bump in capacity every generation. And uh, if you look at HBM, it's a critical, crucial piece of the puzzle uh, needed to unleash the full capability of AI in the market. Uh, and if you look at Micron's strong pro product portfolio, we pretty much service the entire gamut of all the solutions that we just talked about. And uh, you know, with our current leadership technologies in the process notes, we hope to basically lead the industry towards coming up with innovative solutions that basically influence how we think about you know, uh, various aspects of human life and we want to make it uh, make the life better for all of us. Girish, I could talk on and on about memory and you know basically the memory and storage hierarchy out there because it pretty much drives drives everything. I know, you know, compute gets a lot of attention and GPUs get a lot of attention, but quite frankly, without the interconnective tissue of all the memory that, that you ended with, and whether that's DDR5, HBM3, uh, LP DDR, and one of my favorites, which is CXL, which I'm super excited about, the world does not turn. And with Moore's Law um, um, changing uh, as it has, newer technologies to get compute units and I love what did you call it the beast I love that I might I might use that from now on and, and not give you any credit whatsoever <laughs> um, but no I, I think you really um, gave the audience more of an appreciation not only about high bandwidth memory but also uh, microns participation uh, in that we really want to thank you for uh, coming on the show thank you thank you Pat thank you Dan appreciate your time yeah, Gears, it's really great to have you here. I appreciate your you you being a supporter and, and, and keeping in touch. And now you're an alumna. And so uh, let's have you back sometime soon. Um sure. you know, everyone out there, thanks so much for tuning into this 65 Insider. It was great to talk about HBM memory and of course its huge implications to all this AI talk and what it's gonna impact mean for impacting large language models, generative AI, and those traditional AI workloads, those general AI workloads that everybody is focusing on for their business. But for this episode, for Patrick and myself, it's time to say goodbye. Hit that subscribe button. Tune into all of the 6.5 uh, weekly episodes and all the other episodes. We appreciate you. We'll see you later.